not settle down in skandhas. 10. Elements, or 11. Sense fields, because through their own being these dharmas do not exist. 12. He does not settle down in that which belongs to the triple world, because the own being of that which belongs to the triple world does not exist. 13. He does not attempt to do something about that which belongs to the triple world, because such an entity cannot apprehend it. 14. He does not hang on to what belongs to the triple world, because everything in it is without own being. 15. He should not take refuge in Buddha. 16. Dharma, and 17. Sangha, because it is not from taking refuge in the view of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, that there is a vision of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. 18. He should not take refuge in the view of morality. Because perfect purity of morality does not result from taking refuge in the view of morality. 19. There should be no contentions about emptiness. Because all dharmas are empty through their own being, and not through emptiness. 20. No obstruction should be raised to emptiness, because all dharmas are empty, and emptiness cannot obstruct emptiness. E. B. 1. Emptiness should be fulfilled through the fulfillment of the emptiness of own marks. 2. The signless should be realized through non-attention to all signs. 3. The wishless is cognized when his thought is no longer firmly grounded in anything that belongs to the triple world. 4. The threefold perfect purity is the perfect purity of the ten ways of wholesome action. 5. The fulfillment of pity and compassion for all beings is achieved by acquiring the great compassion. 6. He should despise no being, because his friendliness has become perfect. 7. His vision of the sameness of all dharmas consists in that he adds nothing to all dharmas, and subtracts nothing from them. 8. His penetration to the really true principle is the non-penetration of all dharmas. 9. His patient acceptance of non-production is the patient. Acceptance of the fact that all dharmas are not produced, stopped, or put together. 10. His cognition of non-production is the cognition of the non-production of name and form. 11. The exposition of the one single principle is the habitual absence of all notions of duality. 12. The uprooting of the imagination 435 of all dharmas is the non-discrimination of all dharmas. 13. His turning away from perceptions and views is the turning away from the perceptions and views of the level of all disciples and pratyika buddhas. 14. His turning away from the defilements is the rejection of all the defilements, and of the residues relating to them. 15. The stage where quietude and insight are in equilibrium is the cognition of the knowledge of all modes. 16. His mind is completely tamed, for he feels no delight for the triple world. 17. His unobstructed cognition is the acquiring of the Buddha eye. 18. His knowledge of withdrawal from affection 438 is the even-mindedness concerning everything that belongs to the six sense fields. 19. His going to the field he wishes to go to consists in that, without his stirring from one single Buddha field, he appears in all Buddha fields, and yet has no notion of a Buddha field. 20. The exhibiting of a body everywhere refers to the exhibition of a body in the circle of the assembly. E. A. 1. His entrance into the thoughts and conduct of all beings consists in that, with one single thought he cognizes the thoughts and conduct of all beings. 2. He plays with the super-knowledges in the sense that, playing with them at will, he can pass from Buddha field to Buddha field for a vision of the Buddha, but he does not become one who has a notion of the Buddha. 3. The creation of Buddha fields in accordance with what he has seen 441 consists in that. 
after he has occupied in the great tricoleocosm the position of its ruler, or that of a universal monarch, he renounces all world systems and yet does not fancy himself for that. 4a. He honors the Buddhas, I. E. Honors the Dharma in order to help all beings. 4b. His contemplation of the Buddha body as it really is, is the contemplation of the Dharma body as it really is. E. B. 1. His cognition of the higher and lower faculties of others. Consists in that, as a result of having stood in the Ten Power, he has a wise cognition of the extent to which the dominance of all beings are perfected. 2. He purifies the Buddha field by purifying the thought of all beings. 3a. His concentration on everything as an illusion has the result that he does all deeds, and yet no actual performance takes place. 3b. The perpetual attainment of this concentration is due to the fact that to the bodhisattva it comes as a karma result of the good deeds of his past. 4. He gains a personality at will, I. E. As the wholesome roots of beings come to completion, so a bodhisattva takes hold of a personality at will. X. A. 1. The bodhisattva's infinite resolve consists in that, as a result of having fulfilled the six perfections, whatever he resolves upon that he accomplishes. 2. His cognition of the speech of all beings consists in that, through the analytical knowledge of languages, he comprehends the speech of the gods, etc. 3. His fulfilled ready speech consists in that, through the analytical knowledge of ready speech, he penetrates to the cognition which enables him always to expound the Dharma effectively. 4. He accomplishes the descent into the womb by being, in all births, reborn apparitionally. 5. He accomplishes the family by being in good families. 6. He accomplishes the birth 446 by being reborn in noble families, or in good Brahman families. 7. He accomplishes the clan by being reborn in that clan from which the former bodhisattvas have come. 8. He accomplishes the retinue by being endowed with a retinue of bodhisattvas, 447 after he has established beings in enlightenment. 9. He accomplishes the manner of birth. Even when just born, a bodhisattva irradiates all world systems with his splendor, and shakes them all in six ways. 10. He accomplishes the leaving of his home by leaving home together with many hundreds of thousands of Niyutis of Kotis of beings. 11. A Bodhisattva's accomplishment of the miraculous harmony of the body tree consists in that the root of his body tree is made of gold, the trunk of Vaidoya, the branches of all kinds of jewels, the leaves of all kinds of precious things, and the fine fragrance of that tree and its radiance irradiate infinite world systems. 12. A Bodhisattva's accomplishment of the fulfillment of all virtuous qualities is the perfect purity of his Buddha field, through the maturity of the beings in it. X. How should a Bodhisattva, a great being, who has stood on the tenth stage, be called a Tathagata? When in a Bodhisattva the ten perfections, etc. Who? The eighteen special Buddha Dharmas are fulfilled. And when there is the cognition of the knowledge of all modes, and a forsaking of all defilements and of the residues relating to them, and when the great compassion and all Buddha dharmas have been fulfilled, it is then that a bodhisattva, a great being, after the tenth bodhisattva stage, is verily to be called a tathagata. Which are the ten stages of a bodhisattva, a great being? A bodhisattva. Coursing through skill in means in all the perfections. Having been trained in the 37 wings of enlightenment. Coursing in the unlimited. The trances, and the formless attainments, coursing in the 10 powers of a Tathagata, the analytical knowledges, the 18 special Buddha Dharmas, having passed beyond 9 stages, I. E. The stage of bright insight. The stage of becoming one of the clan. The 8th lowest stage. The stage of vision. 
the stage of refinement, the stage of turning away from passion, the stage of him who has done, the stage of a Pratyika Buddha, the stage of a Bodhisattva, is established on the Buddha stage. This is the tenth stage of a Bodhisattva, a great being. It is thus, Subhuti, that the Bodhisattva, the great being becomes one who has set out in the great vehicle.